back to another w Tears one video. Uh, today, you will never guess uh, what locomotive we have today. Well, I say that, you probably can. It's in the title. But, um, today we have a Broadway Limited locomotive. It's a Norfolk Western Class A. Um, number 1239. Uh, there is one of these uh, locomotives in real life that still exists in the Virginia Museum in the Virginia Museum of Transportation, if I can say that. Um, it's number 1218, uh, the one that still exists. I wanted to get the model of 1218, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Like, it's all sold out, and I don't, I can understand why it's sold out, because everybody wants 1218. So I ended up getting 1239, which has rolling, which has roller bearing rods. Uh, I can't speak. Um, and I'll show you what that means. Basically, there's roller bearings on all the coupling rods, and that was done by Norfolk and Western later after, uh, 1218 was built. 1218 does not have, uh, roller bearing rods. But um, this one does, and so does a few other ones you can get. I'll put a link in the description. I ended up getting this for $297 with shipping and everything. I'll put a link in the description to the website where I found it. Uh, there's a 10% off coupon that you can get. I'll put that code in the description. Hopefully, it'll still be good. Um, and you can save 10% on it, which is like 30 something dollars on this. Um, it was a great prize. It was the best price that I could find. I ended up doing a little bit of research to find it. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get into the box. So you've got your typical uh, Broadway Limited box. You pull the top off, and then inside you've got all your paperwork. You've got your uh, Broadway Limited Operator's Manual, which has all your CV settings and all the functions and everything in there. You've got your uh, two-year warranty card that I need to... I need to do this online. You can sign up for it online. I need to do that uh, while I can. Then, of course, you've got your exploded diagram of the tender and the massive locomotive. Uh, it's funny, this thing's actually slightly uh, smaller than the T1. It's just ever so slightly shorter. Um, and that's mainly because of the tender. Because the tender on the T1 is huge. So once you get the foam off, inside you have your uh, Broadway Limited Smoke Fluid and your uh, funnel. Now, one thing I will say about the Broadway Limited Smoke Units, and I haven't had a problem with it yet, is that the little fan, because the smoke units in these are fan driven, and the little fan in them seems to go out very easily. Um, and I don't know why. It hasn't happened on this one yet. I was very hesitant to turn it on. I turned it off as soon as I got out of the box when I first got it, which hasn't been too long ago. Um, I've had it for about a month now, probably. Um, and it's a great locomotive, um, and it works great. So far, the smoke unit's fine. I don't haven't had any problems with it um, yet. Hopefully, I won't. And if any of you know, smoke fluid-wise, from what I can tell, the MTH may be the best smoke unit. I don't the best the best smoke fluid. I don't know. I haven't got any. I need to get some and try it out because um, it's hard to see. And any of you that have a smoke-equipped locomotive know that the smoke isn't is not something you can really see very easily. But um, moving on from that, uh, on the other side you've got your little tool which is useful on more than just these locomotives. They'll fit quite a few different engines, the screws and the coupling rods. Basically this lets you take the coupling rods off so you can replace the traction tires. Um, it has four traction tires, uh, two on each set of drivers. So we'll get the tender out first. Uh, the tender is die cast, the locomotive is not. But I'm not really going to complain about that. The tender is heavy, the locomotive's heavy. It's just overall a great locomotive. So, of course, you've got your tender. Uh, of course, it's Norfolk and Western. Um, Norfolk and Western was the only road that I know of that had a Class A, that had the Class A. Um, if I'm wrong about that, correct me in the comments. But, um, yeah, so I'll start here on the front. Of course, you've got your plug uh, to connect to the locomotive. This is generally a pain in the butt, especially on these uh, engines, just because they're so big, and it's kind of where the the plug is located it's a little bit of a pain to get it plugged in but you can it's not too bad it's just kind of a pain but um you've got your uh lettering there uh which is legible uh safety first 
uh, black smoke, just all kinds of like warnings and stuff. Um, yeah, okay. So, of course, you've got rivets down the side that you that are there. Uh, you've got a real coal load on the top. I like, I think it's neat the little indention on the front where it's been pulled in. I assume that that's from the coal auger. I highly doubt these things were hand fired. I hope they aren't. Um, because the poor guy that's having to do it is going to be about dead. Um, and on the back, you've got your, um, you've got the doghouse for the brakeman. Uh, you've got a backup light, which is extremely bright. You've got more, uh, legible lettering and numbers and things that has just done great. Uh, you've got a, uh, a, a plastic ladder there. You've got some, uh, I think those might be separately applied handrails right here. Uh, you've got a metal knuckle coupler. You've got uh, brake pipes. I assume this is also something to do with uh, piping and things. I don't think that's part of the coupler mechanism. Um, then on the bottom, not a whole lot of detail. You've got your uh, two six-wheel trucks with um, uh, power pickups. They are kind of, it's kind of weird the way these are put on. They're kind of spring-loaded, but like back like they're not like shocks it's just to hold it in but it gives it some flex uh, you've got your speaker right there die cast frame die cast shell um, and yeah uh, that's pretty much it for the tender uh, so I'll set that to the side and then we'll get the locomotive the locomotive is kind of a pain to is, is a bit of a pain to get out because it's so big I can if I can get it there we go get the plastic off Set that to the side, set the box out of the frame, get the locomotive. So, yeah, the locomotive is huge. Um, it's, this is going to be kind of a pain, or fun to do. Um, of course, it's an articulated locomotive, which means the driver's pivot, which is not typical of most steam locomotives. It's generally only used on the large locomotives, where negotiating turns was a is a problem. Um, if you've got with this large of a wheelbase on a solid frame, uh, you couldn't make turns. It would be nearly impossible. The Pennsylvania was probably one of the only railroads that had really large ones that weren't articulated, um, and that would be the T1 or the Q1s or Q2s. Well, and the S1. Um, those were duplex drive locomotives, which means they did not have an articulated frame, while this one does. So, back here you've got your other set of drivers with pivots. Then on the other side you've got your on-off switch for your smoke. And a kind of interesting drawbar assembly here with your rear truck, your drawbar, and your uh, back set of six drivers. Um, you've got your pilot, um, which is accurate, uh, I assume. Uh, you've got a coupler here, if I can get it, that pops out. Yep. You've got a coupler that pops out here. Uh, this is a dummy coupler. It can be coupled to another coupler. Um, it comes with another one that goes in here. I didn't really show that, but it's not really that big of a deal. It's the, uh, it is the size of a standard HO knuckle coupler that you can put in there. It's a dummy coupler. It still doesn't operate like a normal knuckle coupler. But um, you have that there if you need it. Um, you've got your uh, step, uh, your steps to go down to the pilot or from the pilot to the walkways up here. You've got more handrails. You've got um, I'm not sure what this is. Uh, probably tell me in the comments what that is. You've got your headlight with your number boards on it. Um, you've got your number board here on the front. You've got marker lamps. Um, you have uh, nice walkways down the side. You've got nice separately applied handrails down the side of the uh, locomotive. You've got your smokestack. Um, it's kind of weird. The die cast frame comes through the smokestack. Not really a big deal. It keeps the, the kind of protects the uh, plastic, um, which is a good thing. You've got more separately applied tubing, and this, I assume, is the, um, your regulator, your throttle. Uh, bar right there for that. Um, up front, you've got a bit of uh, interesting engineering. You've got a pipe that extends, so that would take your steam to your cylinders, and that allows it to uh, rotate and still have that. Um, you've got your compressor here. You've got more piping and things there. Uh, even more piping down at the, about, at the back. You've got your domes on top. You've got uh, a nice metal. Uh, you've got a nice metal whistle and uh, pop-off valves. You've got a moving bell back here on the back. 
Um, you've got your dynamo. You have uh, working, um, working uh, hatches on the roof. The windows on the cab open. I'm not going to worry about it because I like them closed. Plus, it's kind of a pain. You've got painted uh, driver figures in there. Um, you have a nice cab detail. I can't really tell what's in there. There is some detail in there. It's not painted, but it is there. So uh, that's always good. Um, you've got windows there, and then you, of course you've got your uh, plug back here for your tender, and the plate to go between the uh, locomotive and the tender. Um, you've got uh, more detail here of uh, different uh, things. I think this is your blowdown. Um, you've got really nice uh, coupling rods and motion there. Uh, and see, this is what I mean right here, if you can see it right there is your roller bearing rod versus your normal one. You can kind of see how it's supposed to look like roller bearings there. Uh, that's the main difference between this one and a locomotive such as 1218 besides the number. Um, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else there is to say. I feel like I kind of missed some things, but I really don't know. I think most of it's just on the track. Um, I think I pretty much covered everything there, so yeah. Uh, why don't we uh, get it on the track? Okay, so I've got the locomotive and the tender coupled together. So now, uh, all we got to do is put it on the track. Which, believe it or not, can also be a bit of a pain. Um, and not just because it's got so many wheels, but because the way the weight distribution is on this locomotive. Uh, a lot of the weight is in the back, so there's not quite as much weight on the front drivers. So, sometimes you can't tell if you've got them on or not. Because... If I'll move the camera over here so you can see a little bit better. This whole thing kind of has some vertical movement, which makes kind of putting it on a bit of a pain because you don't really know sometimes whether or not it's on. But it's on, so uh, let me turn on track power and get the remote, and we'll fire this thing up. Okay, so I've got the track power going. I've turned on a bit of extra light. Um, so I've got it programmed to 1239 right there in the remote. So if I press F9, it should start up. That was the startup. Um, so the next thing we'll do is the bell. If you'll notice, it took the bell a second uh, after I turned the bell off to um, actually stop. Um, so I, I think that's a nice little uh, detail that Broadway Limited added in there with the bell. So the next thing we got there is the whistle. Now this thing does have a quilling whistle built, a uh, quilling whistle feature built in, but unfortunately I can't really show, uh, show or let you hear that because my uh, remote, that feature in my remote's not working quite right. So unfortunately we can't do that, but I will let you hear the different endings for the whistle. There is a third ending, but for some reason I can't get it to work. It's like you just barely tap the button and it'll do a really short whistle, but for some reason I haven't been able to get that work for forever. It seems to let that one work very seldom. It, it's a very moody uh, whistle function. Um, and that's pretty much the main sounds. There's a couple other sounds that I like um, that are in your uh, F10, so it's 10 or above. And that's uh, number 14 and number 15. So you've got your station announcements and you've got um, freight driver announcements. I kind of like to use both of them when I'm starting up from a passenger train, but uh, you, you're free to do whatever you want. Probably going to be leaving. How much work have you got to do? Have you got any OT? 
on your train. We're all mixed up here, anybody in Delaware. Okay, it all depends on whether or not I can get the switch lined up. So, uh, call back to your train the signal comes to the station. Okay, so that was your um, uh, dri uh, not driver, but your kind of uh, freight uh, announcements or whatever you want to call them. So I'm hooked to a passenger train. Um, this thing does, does have coupling, um, a uh, coupling sound. Uh, there's a couple of different ones. I'll let you hear that when I start to couple it up. Okay, so I've got it over here at my passenger train. Uh, the uh, freight announcements have kind of been going. They'll kind of work. Uh, depending on what your locomotive is doing. Um, yeah, there you can hear it. But, um, so we'll couple it up. I'll let you hear the coupling sounds and, well, the chugging. Um, that's on speed step. That's on one out of 99 on the Digitrax remote, so. So there's your coupling, and this is you stretching the train. So if you model the Southeast, the Norfolk and Western, uh, or just any old road name, uh, and you can afford one of these, you need to get one because you're missing out. This thing will be able to pull anything. This thing's been pulling this 10 car uh, passenger train. No problem, and I can guarantee it can probably pull twice as much, if not three times as more than what I'm putting on it now. Um, so if there's any questions, concerns, or anything that I missed, uh, make sure to leave a comment below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe below, and thanks for watching!